Welcome to our Compose Cast, where we discuss productivity, self-hosting, career professionalism, and innovative technology. Here to bring you the latest from the open source ecosystem and beyond is yours truly, Andrew Syriac, and with me is my co-host, Jack Moore. How are you doing today, Jack? I'm doing well over here. It's a little bit cold, as you may know, uh, but everything else is pretty good. Uh, I'm excited for today's episode. I can just say that we're fire flying right into another service. Yeah, uh, we're marching right through our service offerings. Uh, Firefly 3, for some reason, seems to have picked up traction, so we want to go ahead and explore that. Um, we don't have any kind of intro um, items today, right? So so nothing really for us to, to harp on. Um, Jack, you did put something in the uh, community updates, if you want to talk about that. Sure. Re- and again, this is just another quick uh, kind of punch out there. Um, I think it's just more towards building that community and everything around it. But as I note, uh, Dollabar now has a Reddit subreddit page that's out there. So it looks like they're starting to build that out. As you can see right now, uh, they have 37 dollar bars is what they describe it. Uh, so just good to see them. Um, at least putting that out there and online for people to discuss problems and just kind of, it's, it's another subreddit, right? They're going to put any kind of relevant information on that subreddit. Yep. So I just joined, so we'll see, uh, (laughs) how that is. We might share some of the stuff that we've done, uh, around dollar bar on there. And, uh, I'm sure things to come as well, because, you know, having an ERP, having a, a CRM, right. Is, is actually really nice to have, right. When you're dealing with a lot of customers, um, which is not a problem we've run into yet. Uh, although we did revamp our, uh, goals uh every quarter we kind of go back and and uh, revisit uh what we've done uh where we stand right now and and where we want to be going Um, so we went through uh what we had set up for q4 uh 2021 that was interesting jack i was wondering if you had any big takeaways from our review of, of last quarter you know we're really good at developing is the one thing that i always uh think of we're really good at all the technical stuff that's all we. That's kind of been a reoccurring theme, though, that I've noticed. That wasn't just limited to last quarter, is what I would say. I I don't know if anything stuck out to you um, more than that. I think the thing that stuck out most to me is the amount of effort that we spent on our engagement. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think more than anything. Uh, so we had gone through uh, our some of our pillars. Um, service resiliency, instance features, like, like Jack said, we got a lot done in there. I think that was probably our our best segment. We we just got a, we pushed out a lot of features. the The thing we, however, spent the most time on was engagement. So that would be all of our engagement with the community, um, networking with other professional groups, uh, as well as uh, putting these things together, putting videos together, um, writing blog posts, uh, me doing the the integration session walkthroughs. So all of that uh, even doubled or tripled the amount of time that we put into the rest of uh, the uh, the, the the rest of the the segments that we right. had the, the the pillars the content all the content that we were, all the time at least we put into the content definitely surpassed as you're saying double or triple what we spent on developments for uh our compose portal command center you know all the branches we have it, it's just it, now that you say that it was pretty amazing it was pretty crazy how much time we spent on all of those and it, it it wasn't like I wasn't aware of that because I I know you know I'm I'm waiting a couple days for you to to uh, get the edited version of the podcast to me. Um, I know I'm sitting down for at least two or three days to create those integration session videos, right? And we are doing that. I mean that's that's where we had been putting a lot of our effort, and and it was really easy for us to let that pile on uh, because a lot of those were just in our maintenance swim lane right because right. those are those were just recurring things that we were used to uh, needing to have to do right Th- those were those were things that that cropped up and, and we went through that what I was happy with here is that you know we we got a little bit of time to step back and 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 really 
analyze the information that we gathered, right? And and, and we did it in different types of ways, right? So so that was only uh, one measurement that we took uh, of of that pillar, you know, of that focus area. And but 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 that was one that really stood out to me, just juxtaposing that uh, against the other two and, and really how much effort was actually put into us creating all this content. And it's it's weird, too. I mean, we're not a we're not trying to be people who produce content. I'm not trying to live on content. I'm not that good. Trust me. I've I've, I've seen good content creators. I am I'm nowhere near that. Right. So putting putting all this effort towards that just doesn't make sense, especially when, you know, this ethical sustainable system that we're we're, right. we're putting together it really should be the core focus of of what we're doing here uh, so we did uh, on the heels of that we you know we we just get together for for two days in a row just just kind of marathon through a, a review and then a planning session so we put together our q1 2022 quarterly goals and i'm looking at it right now and actually put 2021 quarterly goals on that sheet so i'm gonna have to revamp Update that. that okay yeah but but we do have um the focus areas that we we uh changed around here so we have we have three really we're working on here now and we've actually separated given that given that and and this is why i love quarterly planning because it gives us an intermediary place to just stop right um and, and just say um, do we need to kind of move the goalposts around, right? And and in this case, we did, right? So I wanted to segment out content creation and promotion. And actually, Jack, right. I think you came up with this, right? Right. Uh, and, right. And I think that was probably the best move uh, on, on our part that we did this quarter is, is, is to put that in its own focus area. Yeah, I think it's easy for us to just create all the content, right? And then the promotions that second half that needs to be done. Uh, and then I think along with that, be, just kind of leads into the sales and networking part where it's, they're separate, right? They're definitely different things, but I think with the content you get, okay, this is all that we've created. Great. This is great. Now, how are you, what's the distribution look like? What does the promotion look like for that content? You know, and then where does that lead to, all right, someone saw the podcast, they want to reach out, they want to get to know us better. Where does this lead to eventual sales and all of that just kind of, I don't know if I would want to call it the sales funnel uh, and be all what clickbaity, to, you know, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of what I think of, right? You get the content out, you promote the content, and then that leads to people reaching out, which leads to kind of sales. So that's kind of what I think of when those are discussed and at least splitting those out makes the most sense. And I know I had taken a snapshot somewhere of of one of jason stapleton's kind of uh introductions to to some of his courses uh and and he to his credit puts out a lot of information uh in in everything he does you know his especially the stuff that that he just puts out there for free right and i'm like i'm like i would i would prefer that if if i were at the point where i would need coaching or you know kind of in intense uh, engagement interaction uh, I, I think that would probably be the first place that I'd go or, and, and and try to hit him up on, uh, about that but just what he's putting out for for free one of the screenshots that I took was was his conception of the modern sales funnel if you will uh, it looks more like a a, a cycle a, a continuous circle sure oh, yeah. uh, and and he goes from you know people finding out about you, um, to people doing research and then you have this kind of like it's not a figure eight but it's like it loops back on itself right because people continually stay on that figuring out about you phase until they feel good enough to that they know you or that they're comfortable where, where you right. stand sure. and and you know the more that we can put out there after people you know are, are aware of us right to kind of lay out here's what i think about you know project management and here's what i think about you know uh, you know negotiation right and 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 laying that stuff out where i think the project's going can they can get behind that they can get behind that as as a you know this is this is the mantra this is what they're gonna be going towards when they're interacting with me or or, or anything like that right and and really taking the time to narrow down our thoughts um, on on all these different ideas and, and, and problems really that, that we have. Um, and, and then you go into the, 
the eventual, you know, sales or support or, you know, whatever that looks like. And, sure. and even if you're an individual contributor, I mean, when you go to look up a project, when I when I was first researching back in the day, when I was first researching like Ansible and Puppet and Chef and configuration management, you know, I had just kind of learned a little bit of Python, enough Python to write um a conky script to put in the background of my my open box desktop environment, right? And it was this little widget on my environment that had a little built-in to-do list and I wasn't super satisfied about it. And then I found Canboard and I was like, oh, th- th- board systems are much better Perfect. than to-do yeah. lists, yeah. right? And that was kind of my personal evolution. And, and I started hosting that. And I was like, uh, what? you know, this, this thing goes down all the time. You know, it requires maintenance. You got to update it. And, you know, so so I started building out this, this type of... of of system, right? And and one of the things I, I knew I needed was some kind of configuration management tool. So I sat down. And I was like, all right, well, what do I know? Which is already, you know, like Python and Bash and shell scripting and, and interacting with with uh, stuff like that that's that's already built into to servers. Um, and and looked at Ansible, which provided me that, you know, uh, Chef and, and Ruby, which which had their own takes on it, you know, and and one of them had a had a really rich community at the time. I I think that what was that like 2015, 2016? Um, Ruby was or um, Chef. Uh, Puppet, excuse me. Puppet was, okay, I think, yeah. the the main hotness at that time. That's really what Red Hat kind of threw all their weight behind. That was before the the, the resurgence of, of Ansible after their 2.0 update. And uh, what I I kind of got in like right before that, um, or or it was like right after it, right right around that 2.0 update. And I was like, this this is a thing that I'm just gonna do because it it jives with you know the Python, the Bash, the, the everything that I'm I'm familiar with. Um, but I took my sweet time doing all that research, right? I, I looked at YouTube presentations. I looked at tutorials. You know, I, I got up and running. I, I followed all the, the quick start things. And, you know, sometimes it does just come down to the, you know, this is the mental model that I have in my head of how I think things should work. Uh, therefore, you know, this is the tool that I'm going to choose. And and most likely that's going to be your best option, right? You're going to want to follow your instincts right. there. Right. Uh, we're going to talk about instincts later on here and, and you know, how those could be potentially misleading. But uh, fo- following, following my gut at, at that point um, really did... Uh, did allow me to to move past that that level into the, okay now I'm gonna become part of the community I'm gonna really dive in I'm I'm, I'm sold on this product and and that's really gonna be my my tool of choice going forward and and it has been and served served me very very well. Oh, what's that Camboard? Oh, for sure. I know. Yeah, I know you and I love well Camboard and Ansible. Yeah, and Ansible. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know you and I both love our uh, well Camboard for yes. every, for task management yes. basically but ansible especially um how would you say you got involved in those communities then let me ask you that As i know i know i know you've opened your fair share of issues i know you've done yeah uh your fair share of digging into the platform i didn't know if you've i didn't i don't want to put you on the spot here either if you don't want to answer you don't have to but what would you say that contribution looks like what would you say getting involved in that community looks like then well for me it was always about the cool things that I've did. I've always been really yeah. excited by cool things that people do, right? Um, yeah. So I think the very first thing I did with Ansible, outside of just, you know, uh, forums, chat rooms, etc., was I gave a talk to the Open Source Club on Ansible, how to get uh, started with it, what stuff looks like, and, you know, what what I had been doing with it. Uh, and And really that was... A learning process for me because the best way to know that you know something is to be able to teach it to present someone. Present on it, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. Present on it, teach it, yeah, exactly. So, so that was really cool when I was able to to start giving presentations on that. I also started giving presentations at uh, Linux Fest, um, yeah. Ohio Linux Fest, and Pi Ohio, I believe I did as well. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. E- either way, I've, I've, I've given several, diff- several different presentations on Ansible. Now, I'm not like a core contributor, right? Um, I don't know multiple languages, so I'm not an interpreter. Um, I've helped with a couple issues in the, the documentation, right? I've, I've followed a couple bug reports against, you know, various modules and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, and, and I think a lot of what open source, uh, benefits from is, 
Linus's law, which is with many eyes, all bugs are shallow, right? And I, I typically am not one to to jump to filing a bug report. And when I do, it's it's the strangest thing. You know, it's the same thing as trying to teach someone with a presentation. You go to file a bug report and you like meticulously note down oh, right. how to reproduce it. You're like, wait a second. Did I try that other thing? You go to try it and it works and you're like, oh, I just, ah. I didn't try the other uh, thing, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's just, just laying it out in, in that format, making sure that, you know, you are going to be presenting this to the broader, broader to someone community. else right yeah right this is going to be something that's scrutinized right and and you don't want to make a fool out of yourself so you know totally no cover no, your no, no, rear no. on that and and <laughs> and uh, i've i've done that i've done that a couple times um also hang out in the the ansible chat room um on matrix yeah uh, so plug for that uh they they are official there um as well i saw here i'm don't know if I'll be attending it, but uh, Fostum 2022, uh, the European uh, convention thing, is, is going to be online this year, powered by Matrix. So I might I nice. might hop on that to, to see how that is. But yeah, I'd, you know, any anywhere that has a has a Matrix room, dollar bar included, um, I, I try to hang out in or at least I try to keep up with. Uh, and and I think that's it, it's been really cool um, and and just kind of helping out where I can. Uh, even if it's, you know, to be that guy that asks, Hey, uh, do you have any more details on that? Right. When someone says, you know, something's yeah. not working. Well, in what ways and to what extent is it not working? You know, and, right. and, and, right. and going through that process. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, no. Okay. So that, I don't know if you have anything you want to add on to there. I was going to say, I think that covers two. If, that covers two of our three exactly for, yeah. uh, yep. this upcoming quarter. So we have, in case it's unclear, uh, uh, we have content as one, which we split out. We have sales and marketing or sales and networking, yeah. which is our second, and then we have portal. So we're going to continue to bring up all of all the, all of the portal develop all the portal developments basically to that our four for to match basically our front end matches our back end. Right now it's not, but one of the goals this quarter is to bring it to a matching level. So I'm excited for all three of those. I can tell you that. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit different, especially sales and networking, um, just because it's something different. I don't think we're going to have I don't issues think it's, because I think we're pretty smart people, but yeah, it's just not I either think of it's our strengths. Gonna, you know? You're right. It's just not right. It's exactly right. So there's, so. there's a lot of things I do well. Uh, you know, I think I've gotten a lot better over the years at, you know, working in, in a team, right? I've had a lot of practice doing that, um, working with people, kind of collaboration. Uh, I'm, I have really grown fond of creating content. This is, this is really fun to do. Uh, however, it can't be everything. Otherwise I'm right. just, I'm, I am not backing up my words with anything. Right. right. So, right. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. You know, part of, Part of that whole, I don't know if you call it a spiral or, you know, what, what, whatever that is, that, 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 kind of, that kind yeah. of circle, yeah, is, is going to be, you know, getting people involved and, you know, networking is, is a really big part of that. Um, so if you're listening to this, there's a very good chance that I will actually be reaching out to you in the near future. Don't, don't be alarmed. This isn't like, this isn't a pitch, right? I just want to. I want to see how how this is going, um, you know, where you are in life that, you know, this came across your radar, right? Because because I know Jack and I are in really similar situations, right? We're open source nerds. Um, we're, we, we, we both love uh, the project management type things. Yep. Right. So this this fits in very specifically to a niche that is, that is actually two niches that overlap into a niche of niches. And, and it's, it's been pretty cool. Uh, but, but I want to see, you know, what, what are other people uh, thinking to, to that extent uh, we will actually be looking to incorporate uh, actually interviews uh, into yeah. the podcast, not necessarily live, but as we, put these out as we publish them on the, the RSS feed, uh, integrating some interviews that we would do separately as well as release separately on our YouTube channel uh, into those as well. So, so keep a lookout for those. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. I've been, I've been thinking kind of 
mulling around in my head, you know, kind of what questions to ask, who to talk to, right? I, I, I love the people who I know on, on Twitch, right? And um, contrary to popular belief, I mean, they're very uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial minded people. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, you know, individual content creators. I mean, you, you, you think of a content creator being someone like, you know, Linus, uh, from Linus tech tips, right. He's got an entire production team behind him. He's got a full house full of employees and computers and just, you know, all of this money to throw around. There's a lot of other people who are scraping by on Twitch who don't have that who are busting their buns to put out content to right. do community curation and to 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 figure out new ways to to get stuff out and 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 to to give people the entertainment that they're looking for and and so I I want to get kind of their story see where they are in life and see if that niche kind of matches up with the one that we've carved for ourselves um Anyways, that's a long way of saying that. That uh, I, th- I think I want to be talking to some other people, Jack. If, if as long yeah. as you don't take any offense, you know. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Sh- should I jump into uh, Firefly Three here? You yeah, I'll, I'll let you have the a, floor. Give me a, okay, I was gonna say, are you gonna give me a, an intro, or do I have to introduce myself on the uh, subject here? I can do that. I just need to know. I um, will. Uh, no, I, I, think I, I think what you were saying. I mean, people scraping by, right? And you have to ask yourself, what does their budget look like? What is their personal? What do their personal mm-hmm. finances look like? How are they doing mm-hmm. it? You know, are a lot you, of people are they for using some people, Excel? Right, right. Are you managing everything through Excel? Do you have personal finance? Are you tracking everything? Are you budgeting it correctly? Um, it doesn't have to be a, you know multi-million dollar project right you don't have to you don't need the budget for just that you you can budget and do personal finances very easily right and i think firefly 3 makes that easy so i want to reintroduce it and i want to go over accounts now the one thing (laughs) and this may be why we have so many freaking views on the one youtube video i think i described this when we introduced it as a zero-based budgeting (laughs) service (laughs) It's not that. Okay. It is not that at all. So I think when we went over this the first time, I introduced it as, uh, hey, this is how you zero-based budget. And I think I went in deep, pretty deep into zero-based budgeting versus just regular kind of accounting. Well, it turns out that was just way off base and out of touch. Mm. I don't know how I ended up doing that or why I thought at one point Firefly 3 was zero-based budgeting. It's, in fact, not. It's just regular budgeting. Um. I don't know if I was thinking of some other service or what I was doing at that point, but if you go back and listen, you're going to hear me talk about zero-based budgeting and all this fancy stuff and why you should use zero-based budgeting over just regular, you know, regular kind of accounting, I'll say, or per- regular personal finance tools. But Firefly 3 is similar to the others, and I think that's why it makes a lot more sense now as I kind of reintroduce myself into the tool and kind of you know, accounts, transactions, all of that. But essentially, per, you know, if you're not aware, Firefly 3 is in fact a personal finance tool and tool to manage personal finances. It basically can keep help you keep track of all your expenses on uh, your income so you can spend less and, <laughs> and save more. <laughs> so I think, and this is just to clarify, when I first started talking about Zero Base, it's because... That's kind of the first thing he mentions in that blog post of his on why did they they ask him, why did you build this app? Or he asks himself in the fact, why did you build this? And he says, uh, look, there was at one point in my life where I took all my money and I moved it to my savings account when I got paid. And then every time for the for the month, everything I pulled everything out of my savings account at that point. And then I took all that money that was left in my savings account. I moved it over. And I was basically at zero for the next month. Well, it turns out that's kind of just where he based it off of. That doesn't mean that's how the application is in fact built that way. I think he took the rest of that money and saved it. And that's great. He has it budgeted, but it's a lot different than zero. That's in a nutshell what I described as zero-based budgeting, but that's not kind of how it's done in this application. Um, So just kind of going into the high-level overview and which I think we covered 
over a lot of this, so I just kind of want to breeze through it. Um, in Firefly 3, you can... It, I looked at the architecture, and it's basically all around transactions is the one thing I noticed. And I think that you're going to get that with a lot of these services. Accounting, I know, is another service we offer. I think, you know, GNU Cash, it's something you can have on your desktop, but it's transaction-based. A lot of these are just basic accounting tools. I would, I, And I don't want to call them basic because there's a lot of stuff you can manipulate and do within them. But in fact, at, at the end of the day, what you're going to get is accounts, you're going to get transactions, and you're going to have money kind of floating around between all these accounts with transactions so i really like how firefly 3 kind of describes their architecture um they have the schemas out there if you're a nerd and you really want to go look at them uh i did and i found it very very useful at least to understand what's going on um but essentially what with the transactions you get some of these features you know double entry accounting you can manage different types of accounts. You can do budgets. You can do piggy banks. It's kind of like their special way of saving up for special different accounts um, that's specific to Firefly 3. And then you can predict and anticipate bills. So, again, it, it's managing personal finances, right? Now, what it doesn't do, and I think I described this, and I remembered, recall describing this for the other, other reintroduction, you're not getting stock or portfolio management. <laughs> There's a separate app for that. Uh, you're not doing business finances or small business financing or accounting or payroll management or anything like that. You're not import. The imports, They. I continue to harp on this. Uh, I think as I've kind of mentioned throughout the show, through our last 40 episodes, they have a data importer. Uh, I've been mentioning it because they're starting to, I think, split it off as a separate service for importing data from Excel, CSV, uh, wherever into Firefly 3. So it's just kind of making onboarding a lot easier, which is really nice. Um, but Splitting again... Splitting off in, in what kind of way? So they have... I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, in the repo, uh, they had... At one point, they had the data importer under just like a tools section. Mm -hmm. And now they split it off into its... So instead of the data importer being tracked under that directory in the main repo they've split it off they've taken that tool and they now have it i, I believe in their in its own repo and it's tagged i think at 3.6.0 as its own latest is it is it a separate service to spin up or is it inside of no, the okay it's inside it's inside okay. but i think it's just tracked via git differently now Okay. That's kind of what my understanding of it is. So inside baseball, they are definitely trying to make sure that they do right by keeping it up to date. And, up to and, date, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. and adding functionality by splitting off so that they can work on it better. But internally, there's no, like, n another thing that we would have to spin up for that. It's no, It's already inside no. of Firefly. It's in okay. there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, but with that, uh, you know some of the features, some of the missing features, some of what's out there. I feel like this one has a lot of traction, this Firefly 3 project. I think people are really concerned about personal finance. Uh, it just hits a lot of people at home. You know, why Why everyone likes to track where they are, where they're at. It's You really got to... It, it, it'd be impressive to just kind of skate by and not track. <laughs> Even if our, you're using Excel, you're still tracking it. Uh, it'd be impressive to just not do it at all. But... Nonetheless, uh, Firefly 3 is a tool to do this. And today I wanted to jump kind of into accounts first. I'm not going to talk on transactions just yet. I feel like that deserves its own topic. But I wanted to get into accounts. And I feel like, you know, as we've described some of these services, I, I know we've done the intro for this. We've done the intro for accounting. You basically have what could be described as accounts. Uh, there are four different types within Firefly 3 which are asset, expense, revenue, and your liabilities. And really, I think it benefits if we just kind of cover what each of e each is, because I think I read on this one, it's like, oh, you buy a car. That that's Some people would mark that as an asset. It's like, no, 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 no hang on. Your car is not really an asset. It's mm -hmm. not, pay there's, no pa there's no payment to you on mm -hmm. it. You know, you're not being paid from it. Um, you actually owe money on it. Uh, so it's going to fall under an expense or a liability just because you have the, let's say $60,000 car. That's not an asset. It's, you basically are, 
it, it's not an asset to, to be walking around or driving around in that thing. You might think it is, but you in fact have to pay the insurance on it, the payment on it. <laughs> you know, it, at that point, it's almost, it's, it's, you walk off the lot, it's depreciating value. There's no appreciation. So it, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not marked correctly. So when, when you look at your uh, asset accounts, basically what you're going to look at, you know, cash, your checking account, Firefly 3, I guess, I don't know where this guy's from, but I, he really likes including the euro uh, and the US dollar. So you can have your checking account in great, you know, in the pound, you can have it in US dollar and then savings accounts, shared checking accounts. Um, the one thing I've kind of had trouble with uh, would be brokerage accounts because they say, you know, they don't say we're tracking, they don't do portfolio management. Um, they say to track it somewhere else, but you almost want to track the nominal value of that just as an asset. Now it's not like you're going to be pulling out, but if you were to, I think that would be a location that is definitely helpful to track. Cause you can't just black box it and say, all right, I'm sending money to this account. Um, but it's not, you're not going to withdraw from it. It's kind of hard, you know, you're going to withdraw from it eventually. You just don't know when that is. So I've always kind of had trouble with that, uh, you know, brokerage account, those, you know, crypto wallet accounts, kind of stuff around that, because it's like, how do you, tra what do you describe, how do you track that is obviously you want to call it an asset at that point and you don't want to black box it, but it's like the, then do you track the nominal value at a certain day? Well, or yeah, you track and it, it at, you know, once a quarter, you say, all right, this is the value of it. I'm going to just mark it as such and then leave the account as is. I didn't know if you had any kind of way you manage that or include that in your own personal finances. So I think what you're saying is there's there's no special handling for those types of things, for, for, right. those, for those types of financial vehicles, uh, which are going to need more, you know, kind of convoluted ways to account Hands for sure. how they yeah so so like while this you could hack your way around getting this to work right that's not what this is meant for this is meant for a personal budgeting system right but i think an important part of that is kind of managing where where do those assets go are you investing in other other things and i mean uh, you know, you think of a revenue stream, right? And you look at it and you go, it's, it, you know, it's a revenue, it's coming in. Is that just your job? Is that I'm collecting dividends? Is that I'm collecting, you know, money from my side gigs? And I, I think of those kind of, you know, am I doing other things besides putting manual labor in for some kind of return and payment out um, that's out there? is what I kind of think of. And, you know, revenue, you can get in all kinds of different revenue streams and accounts, but uh, that's kind of what I think of when I see those. So uh, without getting too much into that, uh, I described the four that are out there. I described, I believe, uh, the asset accounts, um, basically their normal bank accounts in this situation. Uh, they can be created with a negative balance. Unfortunately, you know, that happens. It can be created with a negative balance. Um, the other thing to note, you, it looked like there were there was a feature there was work they were working on, or he was working on, uh, with shared accounts. So Firefly three, you can stand up for multiple multiple people can use the same instance, which is an awesome feature. That means you and you know, your friends or whoever can use it, and, you know, if you have a special significant other. Uh, they can use it as well. The one thing I saw they were working on right now is shared asset accounts, so like a shared checking account. Um, right now, I think it's just view only. So one person owns it and the other person is just a view only, I believe. Um, it's They kind of noted you can't actually share assets between accounts yet. So there, it sounds like there's something. They made a note of it. They're working on it, but it's not fully available yet to share those accounts. Um, and then you get into expenses, expense accounts. And the great example is there's just a, a list of basically every vendor uh, in the document. If you look in the documentation, every vendor that's out there, you know, Amazon's a big one, uh, and, you know, the grocery store would just basically wherever you buy stuff. Uh, when you spend money, you do so at a store online or maybe using cash. Each of these places gets its own expense account. So 
that's kind of a spooky one to see at the end of the month if you're uh, a frequent Amazon shopper. <laughs> uh, and then there's the revenue account, which I already kind of discussed. Um, for most people, this is just going to be income from a job or you know any kind of signed hustles or any kind of place where you're receiving inflow of cash. Um, and then at, you have cash accounts similar to asset accounts, basically to track cash. And then you have your liabilities. Um, it supports liabilities such as debt and loans. Essentially with this, it's, you know, it's a liability, right? A loan. You owe money to someone. Debt. You owe, some, you owe, money, to, owe money to someone. A mortgage. You're, you're going to owe money to someone in the bank. So, fine. There, there are liability accounts out there. Um, it tracks these four. Uh, the one thing I'll also note that Firefly 3 doesn't have is if you are if you do a personal loan out to somebody there's right now there's no way to track this now they have mentioned that this is something that they are going to look into and also create but essentially if someone owes you money right now it sounded like there was a con not a convoluted but a, a little bit of a complex way to track it it was like create a revenue account link to some mm -hmm. other type of account uh to manage to track this and just make it reoccurring so that, that you can manage if it's coming in or not uh, on those payments from someone else, but they don't have a specific tool for tracking. You know, I gave X so much money on whatever day they owe me over the course of the next whatever years, this percent interest. So there's no perfect way to do that yet. Um, it sounds like if you would like to do that, there is a way to do it, but that's all I have for the accounts. A lot of it is accounting based. Um, as I mentioned, you know, you get the double, double entry accounting that's embedded in there, but I don't know if there's anything else I want to include within here, or if you have anything you want me to clarify, I feel like I just talked and rambled a little bit on those four types of accounts. Really? Uh, I didn't know if there's anything else you thought I should include or anything else, you know, maybe you wanted to cover cover that you think I may have missed or forgot. Well, I would I would just do the same thing that I do with with all of these services. I mean, there's a reason why we pick the things that we do. Um, yeah. And and one of the criteria that we look at is is what does the documentation look like? And it's great. Yeah, I link to it in our documentation because there's not a lot left out from theirs or what they have. Yeah, and and you went through a lot of different uh, examples, hypotheticals, and you know what kind of kind of explaining you know what what these accounts are there's there's no way to do that except for to to give uh, real world scenarios and and they go really in depth uh, into that here in, in their documentation um, and this is really only in in the concepts section they have they have plenty of of different things in their documentation so that's that's a lot to go through um, and I think what we're going to be trying to do with this is just highlight the ones that are necessary the most important, yeah. yeah. I had one more thing. I forgot it. Well, um, you would not be taking that thought captive because you lost it. But that's uh, that's not even what the phrase means. So, um, for for those of you who aren't staring at the show notes as we go through this this podcast, that's actually the title of the next section. Um, taking taking your thoughts captive and. This is something that I think uh, we've kind of been building up to. Uh, you know, we've we've had plenty of different conversations about um, how people think. You know, and 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 this is really all come as a result of you know studying processes, studying how people work together in teams, right? And and studying efficiencies and workflows and processes, and and figuring out how to how to best go about doing that. Um, and, and and also personally, this is something that I struggle with, right? So so I kind of wanted to put this out and, and just say, you know, um, if we're if we're here to talk about real life, I mean, this is something that's really in my life. Yeah. Right. So this this goes back to uh, a, a verse in the New Testament of the Bible, Second Corinthians ten five. Um, they're talking about uh, bringing every thought into captivity. Right, and and that's just a, a, a snippet of the verse, but 
but uh, it, it it really kicks off a conversation, especially in evangelical circles, about you know what is, what does that mean? How are, how are we to do that? How are we to take thoughts captive? What does that even mean? And and actually, the first time that I started going to the community group that I do, uh, the 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 wife of the the host said that phrase I think about five times that night. Um, so I don't know if she had just read a book about it or if that was something that she was just acutely aware of uh, in in that evening, but it, it really stuck in my head, right? And and I, I tried to figure out, you know, what, what does that really mean? And we've we've talked a lot uh, about about thinking and about thought and, and how to process things. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to figure out what uh, taking your thoughts captive is supposed to prevent against, right? Uh, and, and the first thing I, I, I could think of was, was really colloquially known as like navel gazing, right? So just kind of focusing on the things that you're doing and, and thinking about how awesome you are. Uh, and, and, and I also, I also have this, this thing where, um, I try not to lose any kind of a thought. And we, we, we talked about this when we were talking about Camboard. It's like all yeah. these things that you're keeping in your head, if you get them out, you're Yeah, right. Then then right. then you have room to actually think. You have room yeah. to be present in the moment. You have room to, to to take on the cognitive load that you need to to do your job. Right? You you, you can't do that if you're just being constantly bombarded with ideas More, that you're yeah. trying to like wring the most out of, right? You you're just trying to squeeze absolutely everything you can cuz a thought pops in your head and you're like, "Okay, what are the implications of that?" right? And you just start just, reeling yeah yeah, yeah. You, you and 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 you could look at it from every kind of conceivable angle you could you could follow you know fantasies you know if that happens then what you know and how could i make it so that it 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 benefits me right and 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 you're just you're just you're just obsessing uh, over these thoughts right and uh i was i was just reading a a uh a book by um uh, a, a pastor, um, and he was talking about this being a matter of self-examination versus like introspection, especially if these thoughts are, are of like past actions or, or, or things that you did or, you know, uh, actions that you took. Right. So, so this would be, this would be more so dwelling on the past than, than considering something else. Right. And, and I mean, how many times have, have, people said to themselves, you know, oh, I wish I had that comeback, you know, when he said that thing. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you can, you can dwell on that and, and it's not bad to, to examine yourself, but right. Sure. When it becomes introspection and, and morphs itself in, into a type of like morbidity where, where, where you just like obsess over that, right. And you focus on that and, and you focus on, uh, you know the the way you you could have done something versus the way you actually did that 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 becomes that becomes morbid right that's 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 where you turn into you know Gollum from Smeagol you you, you just start <laughs> obsessing over that right and it's like I said before it's very self centered it's very egotistical right it's it's very um, I can do I can will myself into doing this thing I I should have I should have done it better you know I will do it better I I will will myself to do it better next time, right? Now, I'm not saying that there's not advantages to doing that. Like I said, self-examination is is a fine thing to have, right? And and it can also lead, you know, introspection, self-examination, all kind of characteristics of a, a introvert, right? So you're going to have the typical introvert kind of characteristics, right? You're going to have high standards, right? You're going to be able to empathize, Right. You're going to be able to be aware, if not adept, you know, at social situations. Right. You're, you're, you're going to have that kind of conservatism. You're, you're not going to be, you know, putting yourself out there, making a fool out of yourself. Right. Um, and, and you're going to be a lot very prone to self-improvement. Right. You're, you're going to be looking at how, how can I make myself better? Um, how can I make my situations better? Right. So so there is a lot of benefit to maybe not necessarily navel gazing, but a, a less extreme version of that. Right. Where you're able to sit down and and kind of examine your life without necessarily obsessing over it. Right. So 
that being the case, you know, what, where does, where is this manifested itself in Andrew's life? Right. Well, um, I have a, I have a bullet point here. Uh, it's talking about doing the same, the crap out of for everything else. Right. And what does that mean? Well, it means like, you know, the, the same way I can, you know, clean the crap out of a bathroom. Right. Or I can, you know, uh, fix the crap out of a server. Right. Yeah. I can also eat the crap out of a pumpkin pie and I could <laughs> binge watch the crap out of a TV show. Right. And, and you know, those, those, those kind of, uh, ways where, where I'm able to, to focus in and narrow in on something. Right. And, and I just, I blank out everything around me. Um, that's that, that really helps me when I'm trying to, to architect something, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm trying to create uh, some really complex system, I, I can't necessarily, um, have any kind of outside influence bombarded me there, but yeah. you know, that there is that downside to that where, you know, the work hard, play hard mentality can actually get me in a lot of trouble. Um, and, and especially when it comes time to, to relax, right? I mean, if I'm playing hard, you know, if I can't watch TV hard, I can, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to win right. at TV, right? I should just kind of sit back and enjoy the show. Um, the same thing with like, uh, falling asleep, right? I'm, I'm not trying to win at sleep, right? I can't fall asleep harder, faster, yeah, right, stronger, right. better, right? <laughs> just, just kind of fall asleep. Yeah. You know, it, <laughs> relax relax your mind and, and let it go and and that's actually one of the things that's that's most difficult for me talking about like ringing every thought that comes through right like every thought that comes into my head when i lay down and i'm trying to go to sleep is not the most important thing in the world right and it it sucks to admit that because i would really want it to be and sometimes i treat it as a, if it is such right and and uh, I'm sitting here like, and actually, literally, that that ring the most out of every thought was like on my in my brain the past couple of nights. You know, I was like, oh, I gotta remember, I gotta remember to say that because if you look, at, it's not gonna be in the show notes. And I was like, oh, I gotta remember to say it. And I started dissecting. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this isn't the time to do this. This is the time to get some sleep so I can do it tomorrow. Right. Um, another one, uh, and. And this is why I think a lot of people recommend the Pomodoro system is the ability to, to take a break or knowing when to step away. I have broken more than one thing because it happened to yeet itself across the room after my code didn't work for the upteenth million time. Right. Um, you know, and, and, and ways to ways to not put myself in that situation. Right. Um, ways to to say, look you can let it rest. Like you can, you can leave it alone, right? You don't have to think about this right now. You, this, this yeah. doesn't have to be on your mind. Right. And, and, and that sucks, especially when I'm way deep in a project because that's the only, that, that is in front of me currently right now, staring me down in the face, mano e mano, I will win this battle and, and walking away from it feels like taking an L you're yeah. Right. Which isn't the case. It, it's, it's not, it's not, you know, chalking one up in the, in, in the loss column, right? It, it is actually, I will come back to fight another day, more of a mentality, but that's not, that's not natural to me. That's, that's not the first thing I think of when I'm neck deep in something that I'm just pounding my head against a wall in, right? Um, you know, and, and there's, there's other things peripheral to that, like, you know, starting to to dwell on past mistakes, blowing them out of proportion or, you know, trying to trying to concentrate on reading. Right. When I'm trying to when when I when I'm thinking about stuff like that. Right. Trying to trying to shift my mind, trying to say, all right, now it's time to, to do something else. Right. Can I can I transition over to to reading a book without constantly in my mind thinking, thinking well, about the other thing? Right. You know, did, did I try to do that? Right. Because it, it's it's something I don't need to think about, but it comes to my mind anyways. Right. So. What do you do? What do you do? Well, there was a short made back in like the 50s or 60s. It's, it's an old, it may be in black and white. It, it may not be, but um, it was uh, called uh, Safety Harm Hides at Home. And this was a, a uh, short that Riff Tracks uh, actually overdubbed with their particular style of comedy uh, and, and, and commentary. And uh, 
the catchphrase that they mock endlessly is is aware, alert, and alive, right? And it's it's this kind of safety woman. She's like Superman, but like the most budget kind of version. And and she's she's teaching like six year olds not to you know drop iron cast iron skillets on their heads and like not jump out into traffic, right? And, and her catchphrase is aware, alert, and alive. And I'm like, that's dumb. And then I started thinking about that. I'm like, well, actually, you know what? These are like the three things that that help, right? To to think about how I'm interacting with these impulses or, or with these thoughts, right? Um, the 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 first thing to do is 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 be aware of them, right? And and I'm gonna get into kind of in depth in a, in a minute here, but just to to go over the the catchphrase aware, alert, alive, right? I mean, the first thing is to be aware of them. You can't do anything if you're not aware of it. Right. Same same thing as, as anything else. Right. If you haven't spent time to consider your gut reaction to something. Right. You, you can't modify your behavior. You can't you can't try to try to be better. Right. You can't you can't you can't fix your bad habits. First thing is to be aware of it. Second thing is to be alert of it. Right. To be alert. Hey, this is this is actually a thought that uh, I don't need right now. Right. This is. I'm, I'm on alert for, for thoughts that, that aren't going to be conducive to whatever I'm doing. If I'm reading now, I shouldn't keep having these thoughts and encouraging these thoughts, you know, yeah. about, about the busted project. Right. And that's how I stay alive. Right. I, and, and that's, that's the way to, to stay alive and thrive. Right. Um, so, so that being said, you know, what are some things that I've, I've found that help myself. Right. Um, in Eastern meditation, they talk, they talk about quieting the monkey brain. Now, there's, there's a lot of things in Eastern meditation that I don't subscribe to, but I thought this was a very interesting way to, to, to think about how, how thoughts uh, manifest themselves, right? And, and, and meditation is, is simply dealing with the consequence of that. Um, and, and meditation is, is quieting your thoughts, right? And, and uh, step one, at least, right? There's, there's, there's many, many different things you can do with meditation, you know, advanced techniques and such. But like the first thing that people do when, you know, you come into an old, you know, monks, you know, whatever, right? And, and, and they sit you down in the middle of the room and they're like, all right, just concentrate on your breath, right? And quiet your, your thought. And you're like, I can do that in like, 10 seconds you're like no try to do it for like 20 minutes yeah right? right how long before your mind just starts trailing off and then your monkey brain starts telling you things oh hey did you think to you know is the stove on you know did you and and <laughs> did you lock the door before you left <laughs> exactly right. you 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 have that kind of running commentary in your mind you're like no 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 we're just gonna be silent now we're just gonna shh, we're shh, we're we're just gonna just gonna be silent and so, so that was that was a very good exercise, right? Now, uh, in an alternate way to deal with that is is having doctrine to be able to to preach to yourself, especially when it comes to to maintaining a, a biblical worldview, right? Uh, a lot of a lot of thoughts will come under one thing or another, um, you know, either doubt, uncertainty, fear, you know, s s stuff like that, right? And and having that kind of doctrine to reassure yourself with, right, is is a very good way to also assuage your concerns about the thoughts that are that are coming in, um, and and you know, it, that's not necessarily going to be helpful for the the more uh, day-to-day -day kind of experiences of, of getting frustrated with a program or, you know, uh, having other things come into your head. But like, like for, for the bigger, like self-doubt issues, right. Having doctrine is, is not a bad thing to have. Right. And, you know, coming from a, a biblical worldview, there's, there's, there's a lot, you know, in the new Testament uh, that talks specifically about that. Um, I'm not going to go into that here. I'm going to go through a couple more things that I found uh, particularly useful for myself. Um, w one of those things is envisioning those thoughts as originating from a separate entity, right? Um, you see a lot of these in, in self-help, uh, you know, get thin and stay thin books or whatever like that. When you, sure. when you talk about like binge eating um, or, you know, when you, when you talk about sinning, the, the, the Bible does have a really good analogy. You know, there, there are powers and principalities, right? That, um, our struggle is against. So they're talking about, you know, Satan, evil spirits, stuff like that. Um, and, and the common, the common way to envision that is just saying, you know, they're bringing these things to your mind, right? This isn't, you're, you're not 
the thoughts that are brought to your mind, right? You're the action that's taken on those thoughts that are brought to your mind, right? Um, in in uh, a, a book I had read a while ago, because as I like to do the crap out of everything, and as Jack knows, I like to drink the crap out of some, you know, gin and tonics. Uh, and, and, you know, what, what, one, of, one of the things that they were talking about is, you know, envisioning you're, you know, you're binging stuff, whether that's binge drinking, binge eating, binge whatever, right? Imagine them as like a, a, a pig, right? Just like a, yeah. in your mind, you know, and, and they just name it the pig, right? Yeah. And they're like, I'm not going to eat pig slop. That's what the pig walk and the, the pig will squeal to you and, and the pig will bring these thoughts to your head. And then it's up to you to deal with those thoughts, Right. And so, so envisioning those thoughts as originating from a separate entity um, is a beneficial way to, to deal with them because it doesn't tie your thoughts to your identity. The minute you tie something to your identity, um, then refuting it would be refuting your own self. And, and that's never going to happen. You, that's when you take up a defensive position, right? We talked about right. that in, in How to Win Friends and Influence People. The minute you attack something that someone is, then they have nothing to do but defend it because they are defending they their themselves. They shell up, right, right. Exactly. Right. Uh, so so this is a, a good way of avoiding doing that. Um, and then this kind of all comes under the umbrella, I believe, um, of, of talking to ourselves, right? And, and this is kind of where we were talking about in The, uh, the Righteous Mind uh, by Jonathan Haidt. Um, actually, that book has come up this week uh, uh, it's only Wednesday. It's already come up three times and three separate occasions, uh, uh, not even related yeah. to each other. Like I, I don't know what it is, but 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 that book for sure. You know, talking about you know the elephant and, and the rider, right? Um, the the one way he's like you can influence your elephant, right? You can reason to your elephant, right? But it has to be you know very. Very loving reasoning, right? Um, you know, story-based reasoning works too. But like, you can you can reason with yourself. But like, if you if you don't have that mentality of um, my thoughts are not myself, then there's there's no reason to try to talk yourself out of 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 obsessing over this, right? Of obsessing over every single thought that comes up, right? So what, what can we do? We can, we can actually talk to ourselves. And, and that's uh, also, you know, the point of, above, you know, knowing that doctrine, that's, that's what we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves truth, right? Um, and we can tell ourselves the, the truth that we know to be true. Um, and it's not like we haven't talked about this before. So it's like, uh, the, when I when I say this is the culmination of a lot of things that we've talked about, you know, we we, we had just gone over the righteous mind, right? Um, Jack, I know you had talked in length about system one uh, influencing system two processes in your yeah. brain. That's another way to conceptualize it. Um, another way is the prefrontal cortex, you know, in, influencing the mammalian brain, the lizard brain, all of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. The, the the left hemisphere talking to the right hemisphere. I mean, we have all of these narratives. To, to talk about this, right? We, we have all of these stories in which we can conceptualize ourselves, uh, you know, taking our thoughts captive, right? We, we, can, we can see ourselves doing that in, in these stories. Um, and, and a story that, that really, I think, got me started thinking about this was the Hyperion Cantos. Um, and, and I linked to, and this is the fourth book. It is a, there's like super spoilers in this link. So if you haven't read it, uh, it go through the other four, three and a half books before you get here. But um, the one, one, one of the culminations is this, uh, this, this girl, right? This, I, I think she's probably about 16 or 18 at the time, right? And she's, she's endowed with all of these special abilities, you know, and, and, and she's going through, she's seen as a hero to a lot of people. Uh, and, and she was thinking about her legacy and, you know, the, the wisdom that she was given that she wants to pass on in a manageable way to people. And she's like, well, you know, I started to, to, to get out my message. I was like, I, I need to get out my message. She's like, it would fill tomes, right? It would, it would just absolutely fill, fill, you know, so many different pages. So she's like, so I tried to narrow it down to a book. And I was like, that's too much. So I tried to narrow it down to a chapter. She's like, that's too much in a page and a paragraph and a sentence. And she's like, finally I got it to, to two words. And, and, and the guy, she's like, he's like, all right, 
you got to be kidding me. But like, okay, <laughs> what? And and she came up with these two words. The two words she came up with were choose again, right? And we all have the capacity to choose again, right? It, it doesn't matter what you did in the past. Well, I mean, it does, but you always have the choice to choose again. That's what we have as, as humans, right? For better or for worse, we have the choice to choose again. We get the ability to talk to ourselves. We get the ability to reason with ourselves and we have the ability to choose to take our thoughts captive, right? right? We don't need to be swept along with the tide. We don't need to let whatever will happen will happen. We we have choice and, and that's huge. There's, there's no, nothing else in the history of the world has had choice like we have choice, right? And and we have choice uh, in, in everything we do, not just taking our thoughts captive, right? But coming back to exactly why we started this in the first place, the, the, the software we use, right? The communities that we, we run in, the, 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 the tools, right, that, that we use. And I've made a choice to, and, and I continue to make a choice. I, I continue to choose again to prioritize this over right. watching TV, over chowing down an entire pumpkin pie, right? I, I continue to prioritize, uh, among other things, you know, working on this. And we're going to keep putting this stuff out, right? We're, we're keeping on working on this. We are rededicating ourselves, right? That's, that's what we do at these, these quarterly meetings, right? We choose again what to pursue, right? We say, okay, here is all the data and now we have more input for us to choose again. Right, right. And we have continued to choose to, or we've, we've, choose, we've chosen to continue on this journey, right? To continue to produce the software because we believe this is the ethical, sustainable way to contribute to, to help other people, right? If you're on board with that, I mean, rcompose.com that's going to have the link uh, that you can sign up for the mailing list where you're going to get these episodes and more uh, and you're going to be able to join us you know we're, we're, we'll, we'll point you to the the github you know, you in and, and gitlab if, if that's something you're interested in you know we'll, we'll gladly sit down and go over you know what what finances look like right but the last thing i want is for anyone to sit there and let this wash over them and refuse to choose because right. that is that is the unique benefit that we have and we should not be wasting it and after all that i hope you enjoyed this episode of our compost cast thank you be safe and we'll see you on two weeks bye everybody <laughs>